Drinking Buddies, today is Bottled and Bond Day. March 3rd, 1897, the Bottled and Bond Act was passed. And so I thought we might celebrate by drinking some Bottled and Bond whiskeys. I had my wife pour me a double blind here. So these four glasses are anything up here on the bar. Let's go. I'm your drinking buddy. <sighs> All right, Drinking Buddies, so Bottled and Bond Day. So. Uh, if you've been drinking whiskey for a while, you'll know that the Bottled and Bond Act um, really helped create a bunch of uh, regulations that helped make whiskey uh, better. Um, basically, uh, before the Bottled and Bond Act, it might be colored with nasty chemicals or, or, or tobacco juice or, you know, nastiness. Uh, and it might, they might say it's 100 proof, but really it's 40 proof. Or they might say it's 100 proof and it's dangerous, uh, you know, 160 proof stuff that can blind you. Um, it might not actually be whiskey, it might not actually be, be uh, aged in charred oak barrels. So anyway, the whole point of the act was to make standardization for bourbon. And generally, almost all bourbons from this point forward um, would be 100 proof. Um, and most of them followed the Bottled and Bond Act, so you knew you were getting something good. There's some debate as what to whether or not we still need it today. I mean, there's great bottles out there that are in this range that uh, don't follow the Bottled and Bond Act. So things like Knob Creek is 100 proof. It follows basically every rule that the Bottled and Bond Act states forward, but does so without having a government warehouse and, you know, a few of those smaller regulations. Wild Turkey 101, they made their whiskey 101 proof to say we're a little bit better than Bottled and Bond. It was kind of a slap in the face of Bottled and Bond. So. Some people say it might be a dinosaur that's not really needed anymore because we have so many other regulations on liquor these days, but I think it's a, a cool part of whiskey history. And let's dive in. That was enough talking. Last one, this is one, right? One. Doesn't matter because I don't know what the, the number key is. It's over there. Oh, uh, cards on the table. I walked in here and one of the glasses was extremely light in color. And I said, Hey wife, could you re-pour glass four? Because that's definitely mellow corn. So unfortunately, it can be anything up on this bar except for mellow corn. Because the color was just too obvious. I knew exactly what it was just by looking at it. Okay, we got a bourbon. At least I think it's a bourbon. <sighs> could be one of those uh, barely legal ryes. Kentucky ryes. A lot of bar barrel char on that. Um, that's got some age on it. Um, re really solid flavors here. Brown sugar, cinnamon, a lot of barrel char. I wager that's one of the older guys. I think they could be the Dickel or the McKenna. Um, but that's good, so it's probably not the McKenna. I'm not a big McKenna fan. Very solid, good sipper. It could be H. Taylor. No, nah, no, nah, it doesn't have that Buffalo Trace nose or the Buffalo Trace cherry. Okay. This one I'm getting a little bit of an ethanol on the nose. Also a little bit of wood. And a little bit of a, a little bit of a musty thing. Like damp books. That's the Buffalo Trace. That's uh, that's E.H. Taylor. I think that's E.H. Taylor uh, single barrel. Cherries for days. Um, great mouthfeel. Wonderful viscosity. A fl uh, just, just a cherry flavor that coats your mouth and just lasts and lasts and lasts. Okay, I got a little bit of a butterscotch on the nose. Butterscotch and black pepper? Mmm. That's a rye. I think that's old overhold. Last time I did one of these, I was so incredibly confident and I got none of them even remotely right. So I so far I think I'm nailing it, but last time history will show that I'm probably not. 
But yeah, it's, it tastes like a rye. There's a little bit of honey um, on the finish and uh, black pepper on the finish. Ooh, grainy, grainy nose. Barn, barny nose. But sweet, sweet and youthy. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. That is tasty. I'm not sure what that is. I wonder if that could be something like the Jack Daniels triple mash, because it's not striking me as bourbon, it's not striking me as rye, it's certainly not striking me as malt, but it could be that triple mash, which is a blend of those three styles, but it is still bonded. One is my least favorite, so I'm going to guess McKenna. Three, I still think is old over Holt. Pickle minerals. And my favorite, I believe, is four. I probably got none right. Let's see. <laughs> okay, one was actually triple mash, two was the dickle, three was the old overholt, and four was wilderness trail. Well, there's three wilderness trail up here. <sighs> really just, my wife, she's never specific. Hey, I got two of them though. Let's find out which one it is. I'm guessing it's the one where you didn't even put the lid on all the way. This guy? Okay. So that last one ended up being the Wilderness Trail uh, Bottle and Bond, um, the Weeded. Guess two, right? Um, this one really threw me for a loop because it's so funny how this happens because the second, like now that I know this is a, a Brown Foreman product, all I taste is bananas. It's crazy how that happens, but... Yeah, now that I know it's Brown Foreman, bananas, bananas, bananas. Well, drinking buddies, crazy. I've never picked up cherry before off of George Dickel. And uh, maybe I'll try to, when I'm tasting George Dickel, I'll try to look for cherry now. And maybe that'll make my mind forget about some of those mineral qualities, the Flintstones vitamins qualities you get. Alden Bond whiskeys, they're pretty solid. You should try some. Uh, they go, they range in prices, but for the most part, they're often budget bottles. Evan Williams bottled in bond, uh, Mellow Corn, uh, Old Herbal Holt bottled in bond, um, Rittenhouse bottled in bond. Well, I mean, a lot of them are from Heaven Hill, you know, minus the the uh, Old Overholt. But um, yeah, they're 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 inexpensive bottles, and you know, they go high end too. They go high end to things like uh, this Colonel Taylor uh, uh, single barrel, or, or you know, some of these um, Wilderness Trail bottles are, are higher end. Um, Thanks for watching, Drinking Buddies. Happy Bottled and Bond Day to you all. Leave a comment down below. What was your first Bottled and Bond whiskey? For me, it was Evan Williams. That was the first one I ever tried that was a Bottled and Bond. Um, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.